I asked Jan Tanetti whether we have an attendance crisis in our schools. We know that attendance has been dropping since 2015 and we know that we have to put a stop to that. So I have been working leading the, the strategy that the government has put in place around this. Just coming back to the question, is it a crisis, Minister? What I'm you don't going want to, to call it a crisis, but it, it does look like one. I think we were heading that way. But I'm even going to put a stake in the sand and say that we've made improvements and I feel that we're back on track again. I think, I will say, I do think we were heading that way. Okay. But I think we've stopped it before we got there. Well, we've hit rock bottom and we're on our way back yeah. up. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the size of the problem. Um, the data is often, often reported here in percentages, but I want to talk about the raw numbers because they are the children. Mm. And it's important to remember the children behind each one of these numbers. According to the Ministry of Education, we have two really worrying groups. They are... 93,000 kids attending school less than 80% of the year and a hardcore group of 95,000 children who are attending school less than 70%. So they're missing over a term a year. Where are they, Minister? First of all, the numbers can be really misleading because the way that that is, is being reported, there's a whole lot that sits under that. So when well, you These are your own numbers. Yes, and, and that's why I just want to explain those numbers because when we talk it, it works out. So how much um, is it? So let's, let's work that out. It is uh, three... Well, it will be, actually. It's three weeks a term that they're missing. So that so is it'll 12 be, weeks? Yeah, so it is over a term. So it's three weeks a term that they're missing. Now think about that when you're talking about chronic non-attenders and you had yeah. two members of your family that were isolating for COVID and so you isolated with them in those initial periods last year and you had one week of your own isolation. That's how you become a chronic non-attender. But now, Minister, you're on. talking about 12 weeks of schooling yeah. here and it sounds like you are defending no, 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 that I'm not. level of absence. I'm absolutely not defending it. What I'm saying is that, that the COVID years have actually exacerbated the issue of what we've seen. I know that we have to turn that around, but we have to look at the fact that we've got justified and non-justified there. And I want people to understand that, that, that um, when you get people who say, oh, it's OK to take kids away for a holiday, that's a non-justified absence. Let's put a stop to that. Let's work together to put a stop around those things. We can't, we can't find the answer to those young people who are away sick, but we can support them in their learning. Yeah, and those 95,810 kids who are attending less than 70% missing 12 weeks of yeah. school a year. I don't think fall into that category, Minister. So what is happening right now for those children? And if we well, put those I, two groups together... Can we just stop there for a moment? Because again, that data is confusing. You're putting that over the whole year. When we're talking about 95,000, that's over one term. So over the so entire that's that year? that one term. But it's not the whole year. Those figures are from the one term. So how many are they missing over the year? Yeah. So they might be just in that 95,000 for that one term, but the next term they might be regularly attending. That's why the data is important. That well, the we data's don't bad, Minister. Just, yeah, I know, I know. So what are you doing about that? So that's why we have the attendance and engagement strategy, and we've put that in place. We've put a lot of resourcing into it. We've put uh, regional response funds. We're putting money into the attendance service, but we're also creating new positions around getting young people back and engaged in their learning. And we are seeing the difference, because what we're seeing is that that the unjustified numbers are trending down from 2019. We're now seeing a lowering across all our measures in the unjustified attendance, and that gives me hope that we're starting to turn this big ship around. OK, and I want to turn up, uh, talk about turning this big ship around because it is transformative yeah. work, if you get it right. We've had an announcement last, uh, last week of 82 more attendance officers, which, given the size of this problem, which we know yeah. is not good, yeah. let's agree yeah. on that, that does not seem like a lot. This job is working uh, with schools to work on the moderate uh, not absences so that they don't fall into that chronic group. Got it. So what happens... So how many kids are they responsible for, these 82 officers working on the moderate group? How many kids are they responsible for in that category? So they won't be responsible directly for kids, although they might. Schools might want them to go into homes and, and work at those homes, but they'll be directly responsible to the schools for helping them develop their strategies and accessing the right resources to work with those kids. That sounds, Minister, to me like more bureaucracy. Don't we need boots on the ground here 
in those communities, getting to those families and those children. So many of those schools are telling me that they've got boots on the ground. Again, I was talking to a principal yesterday who was telling me about the initiatives that they've put in place, but this will help work with, the, the, with them to decide that those initiatives are working well or whether they are, uh, what else they can be adopting. But having said that, that's not to stop the fact that those people can't go out. They are attendance officers and so they have the ability through legislation to be able to go out and work directly with the families that are needed. But this to me sounds like more of the same, Minister. This doesn't sound transformative. This is very transformative. So, look, I was a school principal. Prior to 2013, I used to be able to contact my attendance service and say, I've got this young person that I'm worried about. They're only turning up here... Oh, they're turning up most weeks, but we're starting to see a bit of a fringe in their attendance. We can't quite get to the bottom of what's going on here. Could you do it? And the attendance service would be able to be proactive, go there. We could turn it around without... Uh, any hassle, really. Yeah. What happened in 2013? All gone. They could only work with those chronic absentees. Yeah, but now we've got tens of thousands of kids that need this help, and we've got 82 officers. Yeah, so they're not working with those kids. Those are the chronic absenteeism. So what we're also... But the numbers are larger for their other group. Yeah, so what we're also doing, and what people have missed in the announcement, is that we're also giving a significant increase in funding to the uh, attendance service as well backed up by what we put into the attendance service last year as well. We absolutely know that the attendance service has to be responsive to those groups. They are not the only groups in society that are responsive to. We have community centres that have contracts that work in that area through other organisations. We have... This, this is a community response. These issues are so complex that we're dealing with that we need a whole of community response here. It's not just on the attendance service, but we have brought that attendance service back closer to schools. In many places, we've got them working with the alternative education providers Providers, yes. And that is making a big difference. Minister, is the government too soft on this? Because in other countries, a student whose attendance falls below that 90%, uh, they are called chronically absent. That's unacceptable there, and there are mandated sort of processes that kick in at that time for that child and that family. Um, why not here? Well, we actually are doing the intervention, but it's a wraparound intervention. What we do know is that the non-attendance can be as a result of many, many complex factors. So there's not going to be one solution that's going to make that difference. So we have to do that. We have the ability to be punitive if needed to be punitive, but actually international research and local research shows that that does not solve this issue. So we have to have a range of solutions. So what happens right now if I'm a kid and I'm not turning up to school um, or I'm turning up to school less than 70% of the time? What happens with me? So what would happen... Let's go back to my school. What would happen with that kid that happened, came into my school and we knew that they were attending less than 70% of the time? First and foremost, we wouldn't get to that point. And first and foremost, most schools wouldn't get to that point. They would be making contact with the school. In fact, this Minister, week... Minister, plenty of kids are in exactly that position. Absolutely. So they will work really, really hard to make contact. And when they can't make contact, that's when they will make the referral through to the attendance service. And what does the attendance service do then? Do they so go the, and knock on those doors? The attendance service might go and knock on the doors. They might go and see if they can find out other information about those families. They might see if they have other places where those kids might hang out. They might go to those community centres that are out in the community to ask what they know about the young person. This is a wraparound. We do and know... What, what happens when you get no response? When we get no response, that's when they, they ratchet up to another level. So we are putting in more funding in this latest announcement for a complete wraparound. So getting the health services in, getting the different parts, social workers, all of those different services that can make a wraparound response to that young person. So that happens right now? That's what we're... It does happen, but we've actually increased those numbers right now. Because it's not happening enough. It's not happening enough. Minister, are you being ambitious enough in this area? Do you think your uh, stated goal is 70% of kids going to school 90% of the time by next year, which is still tens of thousands of children missing out on their education? And we know that staying in uh, school is associated with better health, yep. uh, better mental health, better relationships, jobs, incomes and life outcomes. Yep. Don't we need more uh, than just attendance officers and better data? So, 
the 70% of the time is over a term, and again, that's what it was before it started to slip. We're actually going to 75% is where we're heading to. That includes sickness. Minister, so that includes it, sickness. And I know that this is... It doesn't sound ambitious at all, Minister. It's so, so important. Can I just put this to you? So if you've got your child and you want your child to be at school 100% of the time, but they're sick and they've got COVID, so they have a week off. So they're automatically, they're not regularly attending school. Minister, you should be shooting for 100%, 100% of the time. I want every kid at school every single day, but I also, or engaged in their learning, I so should say. So put that down as the goal. But, but I'm also realistic to know that young people get sick, Young people uh, need to stay at home when they're sick and we want to send that message too because we do not want them attending, just like we don't want att people attending in the workplace when they're sick. We don't want them attending school when they're sick. But the big, the big word, again, that gets missed in that strategy is its attendance and engagement. Let's get them engaged in their learning 100% of the time. Yes, but they have to attend to be engaged. Not necessarily. I do want them attending. I want them absolutely attending, but engagement is that big word, and I want them engaged 100% of the time. That means when they're at home, they are excited about learning. They want to get back to school. When they're sick, they want to be back there. That's the place where they want to be. It is a great place to be. We know we can do it. I know I did it on a micro level at my school. I know we can do it on a macro level across this country. Well, great, because I think the country is very tuned into the results of the work that you're doing. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Minister you. Gentanini.